This was the year of Killian Murphy. This was also the year of Robert Downey Jr. And this was definitely the year of Christopher Nolan. So as expected, Oppenheimer was believed to win every major award from this award season and it almost did. So Oppenheimer was nominated for 13 categories and out of those 13 categories, it has come out victorious in 7 categories, which made it the highest award winning movie of this year. Tailing behind Oppenheimer was Poor Things. Poor Things was nominated for 11 categories and out of those 11 categories, it came out victorious for 4 categories and out of those 4 categories, one major category was of Best Actress which was won by Emma Stone. This was Emma Stone's second Oscar, the first Oscar she got which was for the movie La La Land and this was as I said her second Oscar. But basically this year was absolutely an Oppenheimer year. But while we celebrate Oppenheimer's success we should not overlook some of the snubs at this year's Oscar. For example Killers of the Flower Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon directed by Martin Scorsese didn't win any Oscar then after that Maestro. Maestro was a movie that I didn't like very much but I did feel that Maestro was very technically sound movie especially because Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper was the screenwriter of this movie. He was the director of this movie. He was the lead actor of this movie. He did everything in this movie but still he didn't win anything. I feel for Bradley Cooper. But now let's talk about Oppenheimer. The story of Oppenheimer is a story which everyone should celebrate because Christopher Nolan and Killian Murphy, the actor-director duo has actually worked with each other for five times before this. They have actually known each other for, for almost 20 years and this was the first time that Killian Murphy was playing a lead actor's role in a Christopher Nolan movie and you guys can see what happened. But let me tell you this fact, the friendship of Christopher Nolan and Killian Murphy is so strong that Killian Murphy said yes to a Christopher Nolan movie which was open hammer without even reading the script. He just said, okay, Chris called me, I'm doing this movie. And Killian Murphy has always been a very fine actor but he wasn't recognized for a lead role in any of the major Hollywood movies but Christopher Nolan was the man who just went ahead and said, you are the man for me and rest is history. Now let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. The story of Robert Downey Jr. is itself in itself is a very inspiring story. Before winning this year, he was actually nominated twice before this. The first time he was nominated for about almost 30 years back when he was nominated for the role of Chaplin. After that, he was nominated for another supporting actor's role for the movie Tropic Thunder, but he lost that time as well. But this time it was his year. He was the perfect candidate to win this year's Oscar for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Now if I talk about Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan has been in this industry and making films for about 30 years. He is known for his unique storytelling in movies. He is known for his a kind of unconventional screenplay but strangely he was only nominated for the best director's category only twice. One was for Oppenheimer and the other was for Dunkirk. Oppenheimer was also the first movie in 20 years to win the best picture and also being very successful at the box office. That means the movie being a blockbuster but still winning an award for the best picture. This has happened only once in the past 20 years. Oppenheimer also won an Oscar for best editing and the credit goes to Jennifer Lane and it was again very well deserved because Oppenheimer's screenplay was such a complex screenplay you were cutting between the past, present and just continuously doing that throughout the movie. The movie really was very very well edited. Then it also won an Oscar for the best original score and the winner was Ludwig. And this was also his second Oscar. The first Oscar he got was for the movie Black Panther's original score and this time around he won for Oppenheimer's best original score. And finally Oppenheimer won for the best cinematography as well and the cinematographer that won is also a very close collaborator with Christopher Nolan and his name is Hoytaven Hoytaven. And now as I have watched Dune Part 2 and I know this for a fact that Dune Part 2 was originally set to release in the year 2023. <laughs> I just can't imagine what what chaos would have been at this year's Oscar because Oppenheimer, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Poor Things, Dune Part 2, it would have been pure chaos at this year's Oscars. But now we can safely say this time around next year we might be celebrating Dune Part 2 as we are celebrating Open Emma. Tell me in the comments what you think about this and you can check out some other videos on my channel as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching.